How you guys doing? Good, how are you? Good, good. You got your first game under your belt as a play caller. How did it feel? How did you feel about your performance? Yeah, it felt good. I, like anything, you know, there's things you look back on and a few areas where we could do a better job for the guys. And, and then, uh, but, you know, really it's, it's players over plays, and they did such a good job of executing the plays. And then, you know, come in Monday, clean up the things we need to clean up, and then move on to the next week. About what you thought for, for pass run, the number of touches receivers got, is that about what you expected going into that one? Yeah, I think, uh, you know, you try to, like I talked about last week, and, and every week in a game plan, you go in, you know, trying to get the ball to certain guys, but then you also got to play the game and, and not force things. So it, it ended up distributing pretty evenly throughout the game, which would be great each week, uh, but you never know how it's going to play out every week we play. Considering that DK didn't get a target until the second half, it's not like he wasn't doing anything mm -hmm. in the first half. How was he? Uh, either being a decoy or, or just affecting the game in the first half without getting a touch. Yeah, I think he always affects the game. You know, he was working hard. He was great on the sidelines. We were talking through different things he was seeing, you know, how they were playing him. And, you know, he stayed focused and in the game. And when his opportunities came, he made the most of them. So he was great with it. And, and we got a lot of a lot of guys that can that are deserving of touches throughout the game. And, and they have a great understanding. And, and they support each other throughout the game, you know. And I thought one of the cooler moments in the game was when, uh, you know, when Tyler scores, just seeing DK's reaction, all those guys' reaction. And, and really being supportive of their of their of their fellow teammates and being excited for them, being excited with them. Uh, I mean, a few different people along the way, you know, just different coaches as we as we talk through things and and just having a you know core offensive philosophy that's that's uh, like I said has been molded through different stops around the way and and uh, just just be in different places, you know. I just it's something I believe in and something we want to continue to stick to. For you personally, it's something obviously it's, it's, you know, for me to be a coordinator, dream, dream to be in this position. Mm -hmm. Do you find yourself give yourself a moment maybe pregame Sunday that, just to kind of look around and be like. All right, this is this is pretty cool. Or what, what was that like for you? Yeah, I mean, I think every day you come out here, you see the setting, and you know different places I've been in. I'm always appreciative of the the chances I've I've had and, and been afforded. And you know, this is the next one, and, and it's a great one. And like I've talked about, it it's been a dream of mine, and you know, it, it's lived up to all you know any expectations you might have about uh, what it means. You know, there's there's going to be different highs and lows throughout uh, throughout seasons, and you know, it started off well, but. You know that doesn't mean a whole lot going into this week, and so just you know refocusing, you know re you know you know reestablishing our identity on Monday, and then and getting ready for this week, I think is important for the players and and for the coaches as well, and and just having that forward thinking mindset. I think Tennessee's numbers might have been a little bit skewed last week. What do you know to be true about their defense? Yeah, I think this is a good defense. I mean, they're, they're with Coach Vrabel and uh, and and Shane, their D coordinator. You know, they they've done a great job in the past, the past season of. of Having a tough, hard-nosed defense that knows how to set the edge. You know they're they're multiple. They can attack you in a lot of different ways. And you know, like like we said, you know, the NFL is such an even league. Some weeks it doesn't go your way, um, but you know we're ready for a for a tough defense that's that's really going to throw a lot of things at us. Just today was talking to us about kind of the first Zoom meeting you guys had. I assume way back in in January. Mm -hmm. Maybe I don't know. It sounded like some a uh, little bit of a curveball he threw you. Maybe to kind of maybe fall the game or fall a couple of series or something. Yeah, yeah, no different. Yeah, just his, you know, just the way he's thinking, you know, different, some of those different Zoom calls, different periods, uh, you know, throughout the off season, throughout our initial calls and, and, and uh, just the way his mind's working. And, you know, you're talking about one thing, next thing you know, it can flip to talking some football. And, and I thought it's, you know, great. At one of our conversations along the way, he gave us the, or he gave me the, hey, why don't you just call a drive right now? And so we kind of go through a drive and, you know, see if we're on the same page. And, you know, it's a little different language at the time, but, you know, the general philosophy, the concepts, stuff like that, that he can pick right up on. So it, it was great. And, you know, it's kind of led into all off season when we're doing that or when we're out, you know, in, in or within meetings or out of practice, getting ready to go. You know, he always wants to hear play calls, always wants to hear drives, always wants to visualize what's going to happen out, out on the field. So, you know, that was, that was, the, uh, that was my first glimpse into uh, what's been a, uh, you know, steady part of the process. Saying like, okay, now it's third four. What do you got? Now it's second and ten. What do you got? What do you yeah, a little, little bit of mix, a little bit of mix, setting up some scenarios and 
And uh, just the same thing we'll do out here in, in pre-practice or, you know, before the walkthroughs, things there where you have some time to steal play calls, steal some scenarios. Hey, what are you thinking here? What, what we want to get to in, in this scenario? So he just wants to keep absorbing as much as he can. And that's what him and I have tried to do is just working on getting on the same page. So there is those, those situations that come up that, you know, we can control what we want to control as coaches, but stuff changes throughout the game or within the, the snap count, within the shot clock, and the quarterback has to be able to, to make adjustments on the fly and, and, and fix some things if it's not a perfect play call, which he just does such a tremendous job of. There's a lot of data that backs up the benefit of pre-snap motion, but some coaches struggle to really be efficient with that. And no, you know, sometimes they're just moving guys just to move them. What do you, what do you think is the biggest key to, to being efficient with that and using pre-snap motion to confuse the defense? Yeah, I think just as long as we're going in with an intent at the beginning of the week of the why we're doing it so the players understand it. And then really just goes back again to the players have an understanding of, you know, what are we doing different motions for? What are we trying to get out of those? Um, and, and then having that ownership. So then it is a realistic feel as we go into the games. And, and each week there's probably a little different uh, reasons why we would use certain motions or, or any pre-snap stuff uh, to get some, some things out of the defense or to help ourselves out or, or buy some time. So there's a lot of different reasons, but most importantly is the players have a good understanding in-house of, of what we're getting out of those things. In terms of the mechanics Sunday, of calling a game and communicating with Ross and communicating with everyone else, what, what did you learn Sunday? like going through? I think it was, uh, you know, felt felt smooth. You know, he was great talking back and forth on the sideline, as were a bunch of the players, you know, just having that open dialogue and, and continue to work on that moving forward. You know, there's certain times as, as I look forward, just different moments within the game where, where I know I can do a better job and, and I'll keep working to, to learn from those mistakes in, in a game and in practice and keep working to not have the same thing happen a second time. I think, it, you know, first of all, it starts with his natural ball skills. So when the ball's coming his way, you know, he's, he can seamlessly pluck it out of the air and he's ready to make his move and does a good job putting the ball away. And then, you know, he's got that little basketball background. So he's got a little bit of a double up crossover field on when he's got the ball in his hands. And then he's also, you know, got enough weight to back it up where if he's crossing someone up and running through an arm tackle. He just has a good ability to, to work to make the first guy miss and, and make something happen with the ball. Thank you. All right. Thank you.